and, and thanks to everyone for joining this month's CSOL's webinar. My name is Adam Sharani, um, and I'm a member of a team of labware specialists at CSOL. Um, my background includes over a dozen years working as a software developer. Um, I started off my training as a computer engineer, um, which I would consider highly technical. Um, then for graduate school, I trained in human-computer interaction design, um, which is really focused on putting humans at the forefront of technology or software development, um, kind of the softer human side of computing. So, um, and it's really, you know, my goal has been to improve the user experience of individuals. Um, so, and ultimately what drives me is helping people. I started off my career as a software developer in healthcare IT, um, which is highly regulated. Um, and actually some of the code that I wrote was considered a medical device in that industry. Um, I've since spent um, a little time in uh, university software development, and uh, mostly um, I've spent uh, the majority of my career in pharmaceuticals. Um, overall, I've had over 12 years of software development experience, about a decade of focusing on data retrieval and report development. I began focusing on labware in 2007, and since then I've worked on implementations in clinical trials, research and development, and manufacturing. Thinking about your lab data, um, I, I like to think of it as your treasure, um, which is why you see a treasure chest on the screen. Um, as, as an intro, I'd like to review a little bit about the purposes of reporting um, your lab data. R reporting is really an essential part of FDA-regulated LIMS implementations and ELN. It's critical for systems that aren't regulated too. Um, I would say the FDA and other regulatory bodies generally have a, a pretty good reason for setting certain standards. Um, but um, I've used reports in unregulated environments for a lot of reasons too. Um, for example, um, ensuring quality, tracking progress, um, figuring out tasks to perform as a guide, um, or creating official documents that can be printed, um, or just pulling metrics to help with uh, managerial decisions. When there is an audit of your system, um, one of the first things you need is access to your treasure chest. Um, so essentially having a key to your valuable laboratory data. Um, but today, just having access isn't enough. We, we need to specify exactly what kind of information we need. And it should be presented in a useful or meaningful way as well. So that's where technology plays a part. We can see some interesting information in this x-ray of our valuable treasure chest. Um, I don't know if I see anything particularly alarming to a regulatory agency. Um, taking a step back, um, so with a, with a liberal definition, you could argue that every interface in IT is a report. We're not looking at the encoded bits on a hard drive, but a meaningful presentation of them on a screen. But for this presentation, we'll really focus on reports that display information about your data, um, and not necessarily every interface in an application. So pulling out this information, um, we frequently need more detail. And so being able to inspect it in more detail, follow up, um, that's really at the core of what reporting is all about. Um, it's certainly required for regulated environments, and at the same time, whether or not regulated, it's critical um, for the management of your lab. I like to think of reporting and data retrieval as having two main parts. And so as an agenda today, I've split the presentation in two halves. We're going to talk about selection criteria the first half, and we're going to focus on presentation of data the second half. Um, these are broken down into many, many parts. Uh, we'll have a broad overview of many system options and discuss some pros and cons of different approaches. Here on the selection side, you can see a list of different areas we'll discuss, starting with the select report dialog, query windows, query tags, etc. cetera. 
And we'll then move on to briefly talking about report execution and ways of refining and improving that for your lab. And finally, presentation of the data. I'm using a lot of the similar tools as on the selection side, but for the purpose of presenting. Uh, so a lot of these options can be combined and reused. For example, uh, query, select report dialogues use query tags. Query tags can reference themselves. Data Explorer can use query tags to open and retrieve data in the Data Explorer. Stored queries, similarly. Um, user dialogues can reference query tags, um, etc. So if we were to actually connect all of the dots, this would uh, turn into a very complex network of possibilities. Moving on here at the top right, um, right here, um, you'll see where we are. So just in case you lose track, we'll be discussing selection criteria first. And uh, we'll be following that with presentation of data. And in between, we're going to briefly talk about report execution. Um, so you can just glimpse at that as we're going along, and um, we'll, we'll highlight the section we're in. I'll also try to discuss uh, some pros and cons for some of the major approaches. Um, and um, you can also think about them in case you have questions at the end. So some of the dimensions to think about um, in regards to the pros and cons of each of these options include user maintainability, performance, the, the skills needed to create these or to support these, the current configuration. How is your current configuration? Because that will impact uh, consistency across your system, uh, permissions, um, validation, auditing, um, the frequency you'll run reports, the dynamicity, and what I mean by that is uh, how dynamic or how many options do you want when you're reporting, and, and the format. So all, all of these play roles, and each have their pros and cons in different areas. 